Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a table of contents for a document in Microsoft Word. So I have a document here, it's running to about nine pages and I've got lots of subheadings through it. Now the easiest way to create a table of contents which is basically a list of the headings in the document and the pages that they're going to be on or a set of clickable links to those pages is to do it with heading style. So for example throughout this document I've been really careful to make sure that these headings are formatted with heading style 1, 2 and 3 and these are the built-in Microsoft Word heading styles. It just makes creating a table of contents really really easy. Now you might say well, that's fine, but the heading styles don't look the way I want them to look. Well, that's very easily solved. What you're going to do is apply the heading style, then right click on it and choose modify. And from here you can make changes to the heading style so it looks the way you want it to look. So you can use these heading styles for your documents and it simply makes the very best of sense. So to create a table of contents you're going to place your cursor where you want the table of contents to be. So I'm just adding an extra couple of paragraph marks into this document. You can see here that I've just pressed the enter key a couple of times. For the table of contents I'm going to the references tab here and over here is table of contents. When I click the down pointing arrow you can see that there are a whole lot of different types of tables of contents. We're going to do a custom one just because it's a little bit easier in a way to see what's going on. So I'm going to click on custom table of contents. So here we're going to get a preview of what our table of contents looks like. So you can see that there are indents here. So if you don't want it to be indented, you'd be able to choose a different type of table of contents. Here's heading one and heading two, they're looking a bit different. And then a distinctive one is different again. I'm just going to use the from template one, I'm pretty happy with that. Show page numbers is do I want to see page numbers or not? Well, yes I do. And right align page numbers is just going to put them over on the right. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that's probably where most people expect page numbers to be. The tab leader is what are you going to see between the heading and the page number. So there are different options here that you can choose from. Now in terms of levels, I've actually used three levels of heading in my document. Heading 1, Heading 2 and Heading 3. Right now it's set up here to just show levels 1 and 2. Well I'm going to increase that because I want to see my heading 3s. If I'm happy now, all I need to do is to click OK. And my table of contents is automatically added to my document. Let me just shrink this down so you can see what it looks like. Now it's going to at least a couple of pages here. Yep, just two pages for my table of contents. When you've actually got the table of contents selected, you're going to see that it's highlighted. So let me just get away from that. Now the table of contents has been created by those heading styles. So maybe if I had a look in here I might think you know what that's a little bit over complicated. It would actually look better if I just had headings 1 and 2 and left off heading 3. Well this is what we're going to do. We're just going to click inside the table of contents somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. We're going back to our references tab. We're going back to table of contents. We're going back to custom table of contents. Let's just change this to show only levels 1 and 2 and click OK. And Microsoft Word's going, wait a minute, you're creating a table of contents but you already had one. Do you want to replace this one? And of course what we do is we want to replace it. We want to get rid of this old one and create a new one. So I'm just going to click OK. And now we've got a smaller table of contents. You'll see that also there isn't an automatic page break added at the end of a table of contents. So if you want a page break between the table of contents and your text, you're going to need to put it in there manually. Of course you can press Control Enter to do it, but you can also go to the layout option, go to breaks and just add in a page break and that sends the rest of the content onto the next page. Now in doing so there's a chance that that's also pushed all the content out of the way because I moved some text onto the next page. If I look down in the bottom corner here I can see that there are 10 pages so there's a really good chance that my conclusion has walked onto another page. Well it hasn't but let's just go and put it there for now. So my document is 10 pages now. Here's the 10th page. 
but if we have a look in the table of contents, we'll see that the conclusion is on page 9. It hasn't been updated and Microsoft Word doesn't automatically update tables of contents. So if we move things around, if you take something out or you put something in or you think that things might have moved to different pages, this is what you're going to do. Well, we're going to click back in our table of contents. Again, it doesn't matter where we click this somewhere in here. We're going back to our References tab and in this table of contents area there's an option for Update Table. So I'm going to click on that. Here we get two choices. Either we can update the entire table and we would use that option if, for example, we'd added some more headings or removed some headings. But in this case, we know that we've just pushed things around to change page numbers. So I only need to update the page numbers, but just be aware if you think that your headings have changed, you've made a typographical change, you've removed a heading, you've added a heading, something that affects the text, then you would need to update the entire table. I'll just click OK and it's now updated. You can see that the conclusion has moved to page 10. Now what's going to be the case if you've already got a document that you've created but you don't have heading 1, 2, 3 used? Well let's have a look at another document, this exact document but with, with different heading styles and see how we'd manage that. So here we are with exactly the same document but this time with some different heading styles. So here in my main heading I've used the heading style main heading and for my second heading I've called this my second heading and then for smaller ones it's my smaller subheading. Not particularly good names but that's the way the document's been formatted and it would take a lot of work to reformat it. So let's go ahead and add a table of contents from this document which we're going to customise. Again back into references, again back into table of contents and this time definitely we need a custom table of contents or it's going to look pretty awful. Now here Microsoft Word has tried to get things right but it's not correct. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go down here to options and this is where we can set up the heading styles that we want to use. So here you can see the heading 1 the inbuilt style has been given level 1 and heading 2 has been given level 2. Well we want to turn these off but we can't actually disable them here. The way we disable them is to delete the table of contents level for them. So now we don't have those included in our table of contents and what we need to do is to scroll down and find the headings or the heading styles that we used. So main heading was a level 1, my second level heading was a level 2 and here's my smaller subheading which is a level 3. So I've now set up my heading styles to be the styles that are in use for various levels in my table of contents. So I'll just click OK. You can see here that it's looking just fine. I'll click OK and again we've got this very detailed table of contents with level 1, 2 and 3 involved. Now what if we said again we don't want this level 3 to be included but what if we wanted to include the title? You can see here that this is going to actually be formatted with the title style. Here it is here and it's not appearing in the table of contents because it's not a heading style. So let's just go and redo our table of contents here. Again click somewhere in it, again go back to references, table of contents, we want a custom one. We're going to go to our options, we're going to disable all of these, so we're going to take all of these out. But this time we'll have a look at title and we'll say okay that's going to be level 1 which is going to make the main heading level 2 and then the second level heading level 3 and we don't actually want to use level 3 this time so we're going to leave it out. So these are the headings in my document but the title it goes above that so when we're looking at table of contents levels we want to make sure that the title is at level 1. So we're just going to click OK and OK again and yes of course we do want to replace this table of contents and so if this were part of a larger document then the title of the document is not only a link but it's also a element in the table of contents and here are our level 1 headings and our level 2s 
and we've left out level 3 so that we can get a shorter, more succinct table of contents. And again, if we want our text to start on a new page, we're going to insert a page break. So we'll go to Layout, Breaks, and we'll add a page break. Of course, what that's done is it's thrown this title to a new page, which means this is incorrect. It's no longer on page 1. So we'll click in our table of contents, go back to references and simply update our table. We're only needing to update page numbers because we didn't change any text. I'll click OK. And here is our new updated table of contents. Now the only other situation that you might encounter is a situation where you actually want to remove a table of contents. So the first thing you're going to do is again click back inside your table of contents. Mine is selected, it doesn't matter whether it's selected or not. You're going to References and you're going to Table of Contents. So just click on this option and down the bottom here is the option to remove your table of contents. I'll just click on it and the table of contents has gone. The content is still here, but if you remember rightly, we put in a page break. So let's just go to the Home tab of the ribbon and turn on the controls. And up the top here, on the top of the first page, is this page break. I'm going to select it and delete it. And now all my content is coming back and I'll just turn off the symbol. So my document is put back to the way it was. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.